We'll continue on with our key players, now looking at profession-specific acts. As we consider the key players and concepts in relation to these acts, it's important to remember that the Health Professions Procedural Code is deemed to be a part of each profession-specific act. This is why some of the key players don't actually seem to appear in profession-specific acts. It's because they are in the code. Let's start with the colleges. Colleges' duties and roles are established in two places, in the content of the relevant profession-specific act and more generically in the code. Profession-specific acts set up colleges, their councils, and the composition of these councils. Roles and duties common to all colleges are established in the code. Take, for example, the fact that colleges are corporate bodies and that the shared duty of all colleges is to ensure that the Ontario public has access to adequate numbers of qualified, skilled, and competent regulated health professionals. Most importantly, the code defines the objects or duties that are common to all colleges. These are to regulate the practice of the profession and to govern the members in accordance with the Health Profession Act, this code, and the Regulated Health Professions Act 1991 and the regulations and bylaws. To develop, establish, and maintain standards of qualification for persons to be issued certificates of registration. To develop, establish, and maintain programs and standards of practice to assure the quality of the practice of the profession to develop, establish, and maintain standards of knowledge and skill and programs to promote continuing evaluation, competence, and improvement among the members. To develop, in collaboration and consultation with other colleges, standards of knowledge, skill, and judgment relating to the performance of controlled acts common among health professions to enhance interprofessional collaboration while respecting the unique character of individual health professions and their members to develop, establish, and maintain standards of professional ethics for the members, to develop, establish, and maintain programs to assist individuals to exercise their rights under this code and the Regulated Health Professions Act 1991, to administer the Health Professions Act, this code, and the Regulated Health Professions Act as it relates to the profession and to perform the other duties and exercise the other powers that are imposed or conferred on the college, to promote, and enhance relations between the college and its members, other health profession colleges, key stakeholders, and the public, to promote interprofessional collaboration with other health professional colleges, to develop, establish, and maintain standards and programs to promote the ability of members to respond to change in practice environments, advances in technology, and other emerging issues, and finally, any other objects relating to human health care that the Council considers desirable. A key aspect of the objects is that when carrying them out, colleges have a duty to serve and protect the public interest. The makeup of college councils is set out in profession-specific acts. While councils have members from both the public and the profession, council composition is established to assure a slight majority of professional members. The Act establishes other responsibilities, including duties to make bylaws for selecting councillors and the regulations governing the performance of controlled acts. The Health Professions Procedural Code defines the responsibilities for council and councillors. These responsibilities include a number of things, such as acting as the board of directors of a college and directing its affairs, hiring a registrar and appointing statutory committees, and approving regulations and bylaws. Essentially, the responsibility of council and councillors is to govern colleges and their members by establishing the rules, setting up appropriate administrative structures, hiring a registrar, and creating processes that facilitate public protection. The code requires seven committees with specific duties and responsibilities. These include the Executive Committee, the Registration Committee, the Inquiries, Complaints and Reports Committee, the Discipline Committee, and the Fitness to Practice Committee, the Quality Assurance Committee, and the Patient Relations Committee. The Executive Committee's role is to exercise Council's authority on matters that require immediate attention between Council meetings. The Executive Committee authority extends to all decisions except the making of regulations and bylaws. The Registration Committee's role is to consider registration applications that are referred by the Registrar if the Registrar has doubts about things such as whether a person meets the registration requirements, or suspect that the terms, conditions, and limitations should be applied to the certificate or proposes to refuse to issue the certificate. The committee's authority gives them a range of options when dealing with registration applications. 
The role of the Inquiries, Complaints and Reports Committee is to investigate complaints and consider reports about the conduct or actions of members. This committee has limited authority to deal directly with concerns. When serious matters are identified, the ICRC refers these on to other committees. The Discipline Committee's role is to consider allegations of professional misconduct or incompetence that are referred to it by the ICRC. This committee is quasi-judicial, with the corresponding variety of authorities at its disposal, ranging from censures to revocations. Hearings are open to the public. The Fitness to Practice Committee considers allegations about members who may be suffering from health conditions that may affect their ability to practice safely. Because personal health information could be considered, Hearings are not open to the public. The Quality Assurance Committee promotes quality improvement and deals with members who, when assessed, do not demonstrate the appropriate knowledge, skills and judgment. This committee's authority ranges from assigning participation in continuing education to applying terms, conditions and limitations. Specific matters considered by Quality Assurance Committees are confidential. However, if the committee thinks a member may be incompetent, incapacitated or have committed professional misconduct, the committee can disclose this information to the Inquiries, Complaints and Reports Committee. And finally, the Patient Relations Committee administers funding for therapy and counselling for people abused by college members. Many colleges also assign this committee the duty of administering patient relations programs. Registrars are extremely important figures in the administration of profession-specific acts and the code. College registrars are essentially council's only employee, as all other college staff work for the registrar. Since registrars act in a staff role, rather than providing organizational direction, as councillors do, the registrar's duties are often administrative in nature, although a key aspect of their job is to ensure that council's organizational direction is operationalized. The code identifies a variety of duties and authorities for a registrar to carry out. Because of the administrative focus, any aspect of a college activity that requires an administrative decision or action falls to the registrar, though in actual practice, the registrar's staff often take on the job on the registrar's behalf. For example, a registrar is responsible for registering an applicant for membership if they meet the registration criteria, but if the registrar has doubts as to whether a person meets the registration requirements or suspects that terms, conditions and limitations should be applied to the certificate or even proposes to refuse to issue the certificate, the application is referred to the registration committee. But we cannot forget that since the registrar's role is administrative and the role of the council and its committees is focused on providing organizational direction, these two agents must work together for a college to achieve its objects. Another important part of a college is its members. Since technically speaking, the Ontario health regulation model is professional self-regulation, members of professions do have a role to play though their influence on governing councils is balanced by nearly equal representation from the Ontario public. The statute does recognize the importance of members by requiring that they be represented on college councils in numbers that are slightly higher than those publicly appointed councillors. College members serve other roles as well. All college members do have some general defined duties in profession-specific acts, the code, and especially in college regulations. These include duties to comply with college rules on conduct, participate in quality assurance activities, and pay fees, without which colleges could not operate as they are funded by members' fees. Some members, perhaps characterized as the more highly engaged ones, play a more direct role in college activities. They serve as the pool from which professional counselors are elected or appointed, and they vote for the preferred counselors. They also serve as non-council committee members and as a group of formal stakeholders whose opinions councils must solicit when considering regulations and bylaws. The processes in the statute take pains to ensure fairness for members. For example, the processes for registration, complaints, quality assurance include mechanisms to ensure that members or applicants are given an opportunity to provide input into the process and that once a committee makes a decision, members are provided with information about how and where to have that decision revisited. The final important player is the public. While the law does not assign specific responsibilities to the public, it does make certain assumptions about the public's role. Perhaps the most important of these is that the public will use the complaint system set up by the legislation to make their concerns about members of regulated professions known. Colleges have a duty to act in the interest of the public. However, for the most part, colleges undertaking their activities do very little in the way of reporting out to the public. 
The exceptions to this rule are that colleges are required to hold open council meetings, that their discipline hearings are open to the public, and that they must report on their activities to the government through annual reports. It's challenging for colleges to find effective ways to engage and effectively consult with the public. There is a move by some consumer organization to encourage regulatory agencies to take the public's wishes into consideration when developing expectations for their members. Okay, let's go through what we just covered. Which of the following apply? The role of college's council is to act as the college's board of directors, approve regulations, approve bylaws, provide staff with advice on the day-to-day -day operations of the college. The correct answer is number one, number two, and number three. True or false, because of the way the code defines their duties, college registrars play an important role in colleges. The answer is true. The role of registrars is an important one as they have both administrative and statutory duties. Without a registrar, a college would find it difficult to function. When carrying out the objects required of it, a regulatory college has a duty to ensure the goodwill and happiness of its members. True or false? The answer is false. When carrying out their statutory objects, colleges have a duty to serve and protect the public interest.